Live from the beautiful downtown Marysville, inside the spacious Camp Beal room, high atop the Caltrans District 3 headquarters building, it's time for CT Trivia. Let's meet today's contestants. Representing District 3 all the way from the fourth floor, let's give a warm welcome to the Caltrans District 3 director, Armageet Benapal. And here to represent headquarters, IT, making the trek all the way up Highway 70, let's hear it for Mike Nguyen. And now, put your hands together for our leader, the man who puts the O in CIO, George Akiyama. I'm going to come back in because I just love that. And i got to know, what is the O in CIO? But we'll get to that later. <laughs> you know, um, I want to first start off our third IT quarterly staff meeting right, with a couple of thank yous. The first thing I want to do is thank you uh, to our veterans. Do we have any veterans in the room? Oh, come on. You guys weren't shy earlier. All right. You know, certainly tomorrow we have uh, Veterans Day, and I you know, encourage everybody to take a little time out, right, to think and, and really thank the veterans for not only all the service and all the sacrifice, right, but really kind of helping make this country uh, what a great country that it is. So thank you very much. I also want to thank Darren and, and his staff. These take a tremendous amount of effort to put on, you know, staff time, a lot of creativity, and a lot of energy. I know we're going to see a great video later, and I know that takes a lot of time and effort. So I want to thank all of you as well as uh, Darren for, for hosting that and for putting it on for us. So thank you very much, Darren. <laughs> you know, part of these, uh, these quarterly meetings are really about sharing information. It's about sharing information and trying not to trip. But... Uh, <laughs> Sharing information. Did, how many of you folks saw the director's town hall meeting, just out of curiosity? I thought it was a great meeting. You know, the topic, the subject was really change in motion. And certainly, uh, that's IT, right? IT is all about change. I can't think of an industry that changes more than IT. And so we need to make sure we're open about change and how to affect change. You know, uh, at the start of uh, Malcolm's town hall meeting, there was a great quote. Does anybody remember that quote? It was from uh, Bernard, George Bernard Shaw, and it was about change. You know, uh, change really drives uh, the potential for advancement, right? And if we're not open to thinking about change, then we can't change anything. So throughout this, right, we've got to make sure that IT remains uh, open to change. We have a great opportunity, and I'll talk a little bit later about that, about some of the changes, some of the advancements, some of the partnerships with program area. So I encourage everybody to remain open to change. And I actually encourage everybody to have a little fun with this session as well. With that, I'd like to get started on our CT trivia. Mike and Amarjeet, are you guys ready? Yes, we are. All right. You guys want to test your horns? Are you, you good? Wow, that's great, Mike. <laughs> that's fantastic. Amarjeet, are you ready? I am ready. All right. But All before right. you start, uh, let me take a moment. George, thanks for actually coming to District 3 and North Region. Like to welcome you and your management team to be actually coming and meeting with us. Also, not only your staff in a person, but also the staff which you are going to be meeting afterwards. You guys are actually working with. Uh, I don't want your team or your staff to be feeling that they are actually reporting to headquarters. At the end of the day, we all report to Caltrans, and we're one team, Fantastic. and we need to work as one in trying to provide the service to our customers. So, Thank thanks for team. coming up here. Glad to have you here, and we're happy to be hosting you. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Mike, anything before we get started? No, let's go. Let's go. He's ready to go. <laughs> Mike's all about implementation. That's right. Good deal. Achievement oriented. All right. I love it. All right. We're ready for the first question. Uh, which Caltrans district includes the most counties? District. Uh, Amarjee? Come on. I'm the host. I guess I get that. You got it, sir. All right. Well, you are in a district where it should be the most counties. It's District 3. District 3, fantastic. I have an account. Yeah. Hey, since, since I, I have the mic, let's take some extra points off. So how many are in District 4? <laughs> um, 
How many lifelines do I have? <laughs> <laughs> can I phone a you, friend? You no, I can help my friend. All right. Nine, and then there are actually eight in a district. Now. Well, thank you for your help. You're welcome. Sir. We're, We're one team, man. Right. Do we know all the districts in three? You said there's 11. 11 counties. Yes. Yes, I know all of those because I have to deal with them. <laughs> <laughs> Butte, Calusa, El Dorado, Glen, Nevada, Placer, Sacramento, Sierra, Sutter, Yolo, and Yuba. Yuba. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. So, 10 points, Amarji. You're way ahead. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I would not use this. this is... I need an upgrade. Qu question. <laughs> you know, that's what everybody says. Uh, Highway 50's western a terminus, wow, that's a big word, is in which Caltrans district? 4, 10, or 3? Highway 50's western terminus is in which Mike, Caltrans district? Mike, I will district? give you the opportunity. Wow, see, he's... I would say C for District 3. District 3, yes. you're right. Wow, <laughs> nicely done. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's West Sacramento. But you know, Mike, I'm only going to give you five points because Amber G kind of cheated no, you that no, one. No, so okay. it's, it's 10 to 5. No, 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 it's 10 to 10. 10 to 10, you want to give it? All right, yeah. we'll come down. We'll go all the way down to the buzzer on it mm -hmm. then. Right. Are you ready? Um, UC Davis... CSU, Chico, and Consumers River Colleges are in which Caltrans district? What could that Mike, be? Go for it, man. UC Davis, CSU, Chico. I must say District 3. District 3. Great yeah, answer. District 3. How much, did you, how much did you study for this? Did you, like, pull out the whole District 3 almanac? and? I call him last night. You call him last night? All right. You're absolutely correct, <laughs> District 3. So I'm going to go 20 points to 10 points for those right. of you tracking at home. All right. And uh, <laughs> District 3 is actually home to 12 California colleges. Wow, I had no mm -hmm. idea. So, uh, quite an extensive list. I won't read yeah. them all because we'll be here all day, and we'll, certainly we've got stuff to do. So we'll move on to the next question. In which Caltrans district can you visit the site where John Sutter discovered gold? Amber G. I got to take that one. District 3. District 3. <laughs> right along the Sacramento River. You're right. You're absolutely right. You know, you know. right along the river in Coloma, Coloma. California yeah. in 1848. So all these things you never knew about District 3, right, you're leaning here today. So then, is it 20 to, is it 20, to 20? I've kind of lost count. Is it? I thought we were adding each other's numbers. All right, all right, because it's one, one Caltrans, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're up to 40. All right, last question. Are you ready? Rio Vista Bridge is in which Caltrans district? District 3, 4, or 3 and 4? Michael, go for C. <laughs> go for C. 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 Wow, 3 and 4. How did you know that, Mike? He told me the answer. Oh. <laughs> Integrity is one of our values. We're one team. We're one team, that's right. And you're absolutely right. The Rio Vista Bridge is in districts three and four. Trick question, right? Because it spans uh, the river, and here we are. We've got the proof to show it. For reporting purposes, it gets reported in a district three. For maintenance purposes, Bijan Did actually takes care of it. Oh, is, is that how it works? <laughs> so that means he gets the bill? He gets the bill, day. and I get to enjoy it. You get the credit. Oh, wow, right. see? Right. Amber Jean's a smart guy. I always knew that. Well, thank you so much. You know, I think um, we actually have a prize, if I can find it. <laughs> Did you bring it for the now? winner? No, you guys are going to have to go together on it. Okay. Let me see. Here it is. We've got a Starbucks gift card. So I'm going to rip it in half. No. That would be great. You guys are going to have to go no. together. Mike is our guest, so it belongs to you. you. It's for you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Great job. Well, that's our. Did, was anybody surprised by any of those answers, or do you guys pretty much have all those cold as well? Okay. I was surprised at the twelve colleges. To be honest with you, I, I didn't know that much activity was happening. Uh, three universities and nine colleges. Wow, fantastic! Mm -hmm. So certainly a lot going on. It probably keeps you very busy. That's what we recruit. Most of the folks should be from one of those. Sorry, yes, uh, yeah. out of curiosity, how many folks attended? Uh, can we pull up? Yeah. I'm sorry. Can you pull up that list again? <laughs> Just uh, out of curiosity, I want to know how many folks attended all of those. Or any of them. Or any of the college. Yeah, probably not all, because that'd be a lot. Then, that'd then, be a professional yeah, student. Then they would huh? be in the college forever. What do you think? Show of hands, how many folks? Wow. wow. That's amazing. 
So our recruitment efforts are working. Very nice. You're right. Yeah. It's working good. Yeah. I know I've got a couple on there. Sac City, and ARC. ARC yeah, and Sac State. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very Consumers. nice. Mm-hmm. Very good. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I think now um, we're going to take a little break and, and show a, a trailer. Is that correct? Yes. Ed? Fantastic. This is a, a kind of a day in the life yeah, or some fun stuff. I'm yeah, sure yeah, many of you will be okay. featured in this next video. Marysville, California, the Leo J. Trombatory Building. Home to Caltrans District 3. The fifth floor, where four dedicated groups of information technology professionals unite in a single purpose to provide support and maintain information technology that works. Oh my goodness, I can't get in! Which seems to be the problem. It's not allowing me to get in. Let's see here. I can't get to my work. Got it. Oh, thank you. You saved the day. Not in my neighborhood. PC support. Quick, responsive computer assistance to over 1,500 customers. PC support answers the call. Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Back off, man. I'm an IT professional. Build support. On the move to over 65 locations, covering 11 counties. Build support. You know who to call. I ain't afraid of no host. Network operations. LAN, WAN, landline, cellular, servers, web, and GIS. Network operations makes the call. I ain't afraid of no form. Technical consulting. Procurement. Deployment, survey, technical consulting, one call does it all. Together, they become a group so powerful, a knowledge base so incredibly diverse, a unit so resourceful, it's scary. Coming soon to a cubicle near you. Who are you going to call? Best videos I've seen, you know, and stuff like that. I hope you guys had fun making it. You know, I know I often hear about these uh, these great efforts when I visit the other districts. And not only does it give us a feel for or D3, but it really gives a feel for the folks who are making it happen. So thanks for all that great work. All right. Um, actually, I want to invite Darren up so we can chat a little bit about uh, D3. Yeah. Have a seat, Darren. All right, and so, Darren, how, how long have you been here? We chatted out uh, in the hall. We've talked uh, over the course of my, my year here. So how long have you been here in D3? I've been in D3 since uh, for about eight and a half years now. Well, fantastic. And before that? I worked for uh, Child Welfare Services through OSI. Okay. And I actually worked at ISAWS prior to that, so the Statewide Automated Welfare System. Okay. ISAWS. It doesn't sound like a very friendly project. Oh, it, it, it was a very interesting place to work. Very good, very yeah. good. And so how do you like uh, life here? Uh, uh, pretend Amarjeet's not in the room. How do you like life here in D3? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like life here in D3 a lot. It's a, it's a nice place to work. I've got great staff and uh, great customers. So. Fantastic. What do you got going on in D3? What's, what are some of the most interesting things that are happening here? Uh, well, we're, we're currently working on the uh, Office 365 patching, okay. getting the, the devices ready for the email conversion. Uh, we go, our customers go on the 19th. Wow. The weekend of the 19th, and then uh, we're also working on the uh, ASE project. Uh, we've got 31 uh, sites that have been uh, converted. Okay. We've got uh, uh, five left. One of them we're not going to be able to get to, but uh, the four others. Uh, you, you, what's going on with the, the one? Is there, <laughs> is there a story behind that, or is it, is it too remote? Or? It's, it's very remote. There's a okay. few staff that sit there, but it's, uh, 
it, it's uh, kind of way out. I, I believe the uh, the estimated cost to uh, get that up and running is about ninety grand. Wow, certainly that'd be a big hit on the budget. So yeah. I, I like your thinking. We should leave that one. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that works for me. Do you uh, do you think folks are ready for O three sixty five here in I, the district? I think so. All I right. think so. Yeah, yeah, we're we're prepared. We've got uh, uh, we've got a lot of great staff. You know, our staff uh, uh, make the managers here look good. So it's uh, it's nice to have uh, the staff that we have. Uh, very dedicated. A lot of a lot of people willing to volunteer. Very important to volunteer. They volunteer for for a lot of stuff. And uh, uh, we uh, actually have a program that we started about a year, year and a half ago called Walk a Mile. Oh, wow. uh, help cross train people. We started with our PC support and our field support units and. Uh, uh, after we finished that, we opened it up to everybody. So we've got a lot of staff who have cross-trained in other units. It gives them a lot of opportunity and a lot of uh, experience and knowledge about what's going on in different teams. Fantastic. That sounds like a great program. We should probably be looking at uh, on a statewide basis. You know, I think opportunity to cross-train uh, gives folks a little variety in their jobs. And, you know, it also makes the organization a lot stronger, you know, as folks know, right, other people's roles. So. Yeah, it helps them get some experience maybe in what they're interested in to, to continue their careers as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you know about how many folks have gone through that program? Uh, every, I think uh, almost Is everybody it? in our team's done it. Wow, so, fantastic. Yeah, so just a few people. I think the newer staff uh, probably okay. haven't, but everybody else has. Well, that's great. You know, mm -hmm. certainly, I, I, again, I think I can't applaud you more for that. I think it really strengthens the team and, and hopefully encourages more job satisfaction as folks get a little variety in the work that they do. Yeah, well, it's the staff that, uh, that make it work yep. because they're the ones that have to, to buy into it and participate, so they're doing a great job. Fantastic. Walk a mile, though. I, I don't know. For me, I've maybe walked 10 <laughs> feet or something. <laughs> we have to rename that so I can, uh, I can participate in that. But thank you. It certainly sounds like you're doing some great things uh, here in D3. Thank you. Yep. All right, you know, I want to talk about some other great things that are happening. You know, if, if you've seen, again, Malcolm's uh, town hall, he talked about uh, change in motion. And I want to talk a little bit about some of our direction. You know, hopefully some of you have seen what I'm going to call, uh, you know, the pyramid diagram. But it really speaks to kind of where we're heading over, the, over really this uh, fiscal year, the rest of this fiscal year. I hope in the future develop a more full-blown strategic plan. And, um, you know, it all starts with, and you've heard me talk a, a little bit about this before, it all starts with what's going on with transportation. And I'm not going to read this uh, verbatim, right? Uh, but basically, you know, transportation is really evolving. You know, you look at how technologies kind of roll through a number of industries, whether it's financial services or entertainment or so forth. I see that happening right now in transportation. You look at ITS systems, right? We've talked about, you know, the 100 million lines of code in, in a new car and, and 8 million lines of code in an F-16 fighter. You know, there's a lot that's happening on the freeways, right? Vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure. It's all happening. And what a great time for all of us to be working in transportation. You know, I, I see IT is one of the levers, right, to help transform transportation. You know, and, and again, you know, we're at the tip of that spear. And, and that's, that's the excitement that I have, right, every time I come to work and every time, you know, we get an opportunity to try to do something uh, new and exciting. So please join us, right, in part of that, in part of that role, in part of that transformation of the transportation organization. We're working in kind of in three areas. You know, I'm going to say we're working on uh, stability, efficiency, and transformation. You know, on the stability front, right, we've had some, uh, some difficulties with some of our IT projects, right? CMS certainly was, was something we were able to get through. But we have a number of reforms around the CMS project. There are 16 major reforms, and I want to say that, you know, we were very successful with all of them. I think we actually closed them all out a week or two ago, right, and we were able to enhance our project management capabilities. We've also developed a couple of uh, funding proposals, right, because we recognize that there's been some deferred maintenance on our IT infrastructure, and there's been some deferred maintenance in our security program. You know, I'm going to say that we're in the red zone, Right? We're very close to, to scoring. Those efforts are now being, you know, considered at the Department of Finance. And uh, we have not only the department support on those efforts, as well as agency support on those efforts. We need to understand more of our, our technology costs. You know, a lot of times I get questions about, you know, why does IT cost so much, right? Or where do you spend your IT dollars? So we'll be going through an effort to try to enhance our understanding. I can tell you, 
from a budget perspective, about 85% of our O&E is spent on three things, our telecom expenses, maintenance on our hardware and software, and OTEC charges. Right? And we're trying to free up some more dollars so we can make some more investment, both in our infrastructure and, quite frankly, you know, in, in us as staff, right? trying to get more training dollars out uh, to the districts and distribute to, uh, to staff. Um, we also have made some alignments with our IT structure. You know, I think you saw the network group moved out, right, of the security area and joined infrastructure. We're going to continue to refine uh, our structure. MSO moved, right, from a standalone organization to customer services uh, division. Uh, so you're going to continue to see some of those alignments as we try to optimize our structure so we can deliver the most that we can. Um, I talked a little bit about developing an IT strategic plan. You know, although this is kind of a focus document, a strategic focus document, I still want to develop a full-blown IT strategic plan, which includes a lot of engagement with our program areas, to see where they're at now. What do they need now, and where are they heading? Right, and we're going to tie that together with uh, kind of our capabilities. Right, and if there's gaps, we're going to look at how to fill up those gaps. Uh, workforce planning. You know, I mean, I was actually in D2. Earlier in the week, and uh, they said within five years, only two folks in that room are going to be there. So, you know, what does that look like? The silver tsunami, right? The staffing levels, you know, are, are the 600 staff, is that the right number, right? Or is it 550 at higher levels? Looking at all of those workforce planning areas, uh, that is part of our move towards stabilization uh, of IT. As we go up the pyramid or the stack, you know, we're going to start looking at uh, efficiency measures as well. You know, rationalizing our software tools. Were any of you folks on the standards uh, groups that have gone back? Thank you very much. So I think that helps us as well, right? How many tool sets do we need? You know, do we need 31 flavors, right? Or, or can we get down to three flavors? It's easier for us from a training perspective to maintain lesser, uh, you know, types of software, flavors of software. And it's also cheaper from a, from a maintenance standpoint. So those standards efforts really help us kind of narrow the field down, right, and get to a, a smaller number of tools. Uh, technology business management, that's kind of a, a new area where, you know, organizations are actively looking at the costs of individual services that they provide. You know, so what does EFIS cost us to provide, right? What does PRISM cost us to provide, right? What's the cost of desktop services or, you know, LDS or all of our systems? Because then we can start to have the discussions with the program areas to say, well, did you know this system costs X dollars to support? Is that really, you know, important to you, right? Or should we look at decommissioning some of those services and enhancing other services that they use more frequently? And um, IT service management, ITIL, I think that was actually mentioned in my first quarterly uh, discussion. You know, we're about to stand up an uh, enterprise-wide incident management process, uh, configuration management, all those fundamental processes are very important. Uh, I don't know if any of you have heard about uh, the DMV issues that we've had recently, you know, one of our sister departments. So that also creates uh, a greater awareness of how important, you know, things like configuration ma management or other things are. So you'll see more information uh, going down the path for that. Yeah. At the top of the pyramid is really where we start to talk about transformation. You know, that's uh, ITS systems, you know, those intelligent transportation <coughs> systems. Uh, I've gone to a couple of ITS conferences, and they talk about not just California, but other states. You know, a number of those early ITS systems were really designed for reliability and usability, you know, and not necessarily security. Um, I think for us, ITS is going to continue to grow because we don't necessarily get a lot of uh, right away, right? So we've got to make the most of our freeways that we have now. So the ITS is part of the solution to get more throughput on those highways. Now, BI, big data, um, you folks know we've, we actually have a consultant on site in Sacramento that's talking, you know, through some of the program areas, uh, more specifically maintenance, to say, you know, what's going on with your data needs, right? And I had a discussion with Will Shuck yesterday to talk about data and how do we get uh, the best data, how, how do we ensure we've got good data quality, you know, how do we govern our data, um, and you see it all of our strategic plans. We're extremely performance-driven. So ensuring that we've got the right data, ensuring that we make the best analysis on our data uh, is all about the BI uh, and big data journey. Um, lastly there, I also have a California State Collision Data Automation Project. Boy, that's a mouthful. 
you know, uh, and that's basically what used to be called sweaters. You know, there's a lot of interaction between Caltrans and CHP about accident information. You know, the, the CHP officers take that information, and, but their primary goal is to get off the highway when something happens, you know, and that information gets sent to us, and we analyze it, and we look for trends and accidents so we can say, you know, is there, is there some opportunities to make our highways better in a particular area? But those things, BI, ITS, right, the uh, cash uh, CDAP project, all those really help us transform, you know, movement across California's highways of goods and services. And, and that's where, right, I think the excitement's at. You know, so for us, we're really, uh, we're really building a pyramid, right? It's about stability. It's about efficiency. And at the top, it's how we engage on those really transformational efforts that are happening uh, here at Caltrans. So, you know, I, I encourage you, right, to keep up the great work you're doing. i got to tell you, you know, as we start uh, playing, especially in the areas like uh, transformation, right, or, or stability and efficiency, we really need everybody at their best, right? So continue to do the great work that you're doing, right, and we're going to continue to ask uh, the very best from you. So that's, that's going to be our journey or continue to be our journey over the next uh, six, eight months until we get a full-blown strategic plan in place. Any questions about about the pyramid or where we're heading? No. Well, let me head let me head to a, another section. I think I'm going to start to talk to the IT division chiefs. Let's talk about uh, what they're doing. I, I don't know if you guys have a preference on who goes up first. Patty, are are you first? All right. Welcome, welcome, Patty. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's been a long time since we've done this. I think the last time we did this was uh, in San Diego. And yes. That was an exciting experience. It certainly was. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly was. And you have been keeping me busy ever since then. Well, thank you for taking the MSO, you know, the IT admin group. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Uh, managing that team. Thank you. Uh, in the division, we're working on efficiencies. That's, oh. that's where we're going right now. Right. Uh We've streamlined the IT certification approval process. So, so we've have we done a, how streamlined? Have we done away with it or we, no? No, not it's quite, right, but it's a right. lot quicker than it used to be. Fantastic. Right. We've, um, in the PMO, we've uh, improved the SWMBA approval process, and we recently had six of them approved through agency. Oh, fantastic. And what? That's, that's a great... That's a great success story. Getting anything through A's. No, in case they're watching, no, agency's a great partner for us, and we're really happy when they approve our things. What is an S1BA? You know, we're so filled with acronyms here. We are. It's a stage one business analysis. And in layman's terms, it's the concept or the business case to start a project. So we develop, you know, the real business case. Why does the business need it? What's the value to the organization? and um, ensuring that there's sponsorship for it. And once we get that uh, documented, as well as objectives of what the intended project is for, then uh, it goes through the internal approval process and over okay. to agency. Very good. Well, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, in the districts, they recently completed the printer efficiency uh, project and have mm -hmm. reduced by 50%. So wow. that's a great initiative that I know was really high on COME's um, list of uh, achievements for the year. It, it was. You know, uh, actually, Caltrans overall was looking at, at budget. You know, we always have this kind of funding issue with the gas tax not being what it used to be. And uh, we had some consultants come in and look at efficiency measures, and the printer efficiency measures was identified uh, by mm -hmm. Sperry, and, and KPMG is one of those opportunities. Right, right, you know. right. Um, another area that I know people are really interested in is hiring. Uh, we started this year with, let me cheat, 83 vacancies. All right. Um, we have filled 76 vacancies. Oh, so we only have seven left. Well, Is... you would think. Okay. Uh, 23 yeah. of those were, were promotions. All right. So that, of course, creates another vacancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a roll down there, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. unfortunately, uh, well, I can't say it's only seven. We currently right. have 68 vacancies, and so that accounts for the, the coming yeah. and going, the promotions, retirements and things of that nature. But we've been doing some creative partnering with the Division oh, of HR. Fantastic. And uh, have really started pushing things through the process a lot quicker. Awesome. So what have you done to, to partner? How far have you gone 
you know, in that partnership? We've partnered so far as to loan one of our employees over there to process stuff for us, oh, solely great. for IT. So uh, we start the process, then we handle the process over there, and then we take it back and handle it internally. So ultimately, we are the process. All right. <laughs> Well, and that's a great, you know, partnership approach, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got to think out of the box right, right. and try to find different ways because I, I know, you know, it's so hard, right, when we're not at full staff and right. we're not able to get done what, what we need to for the program areas. Right, so right. You. But I think the promotions are a good news story. Oh, fantastic. You said yeah. 23? 23. Out of 70? Out of 76. 76. So uh, that's almost that's a, a third. third. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great news. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's great. You're welcome. Well, great job, Patty. I really thank you for your time. Thank you, and thank you to everyone in District yep. 3. Appreciate the hospitality. All right. Thank you. All right. And that concludes our show. No, Mike Wynn, come on up. <laughs> How are you doing, Mike? Doing good. Have a seat. I don't know if you're going to make it up there for a second. So. That was a tough game. That was a tough game? I know. It feels a bit like college, doesn't it? No. <laughs> How's it going? Pretty good. Yourself? Pretty good. All right. What's going on with you, Mike? Anything exciting? Yeah, one of the things that we've been working and collaborating with District 3 and the rest of the districts throughout the state is um, preparing for the email migration. You know, earlier, Darian said that um, he's been working on um, um, patching the yeah. Desktops, laptops, and so on to make sure that you know they are ready to uh, to go on the 19th. So uh, I'm very pleased to report that you know IT um, has been successfully migrated over um, to the uh, Office 365 environment. You know, in your terms, we've been uh, sipping the champagne before we so, uh, serve it up to our customers. So we've been doing that. I've always seen you as more a beer guy than a the champagne guy. That's, uh, that's our little secret. That's our little yeah. secret. All right. Well, fantastic. Yeah. So in addition to that, um, we've been working on standards. Okay. You know, part of the operational efficiency as part of your pyramid mm -hmm. um, earlier that you discussed, uh, we've been working on standards, uh, developing, establishing, maintaining what we call Caltrans IT standards in terms of, you know, what, what the desktops will be, what their configuration will be, uh, server, storage, networking devices, as well as software that run on those platforms. Uh, we want to make sure that um, we work together as one Caltrans, making sure that the equipment are compatible, they are uh, scalable, they are secure, and we can support them to serve our customers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the uh, things that we've also been doing as part of um, the work group is also uh, coming up standards for beer bottle. Oh, so what size are we? are going to 16 pints or 16? Yeah, 16 All right, that's pretty standard. I like that. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't say 40 because that can be excessive. Uh, that's our next year, you know. Upgrade. Okay, we're moving up. Uh, we're moving All right, up, I like right. it. Aim high. Yeah. Um, so um, one more thing I'd like to share is that we have been um, also engaging in um, mobile de device management mm -hmm. solutions. Um, uh, Kome is our sponsor in this effort. We're looking to help uh, transform um, how our workforce really do work out in the field. Uh, today, you may uh, already know that you know they print paper copies, going out there doing projects, inspecting bridges, and so on. They have to go into the office, um, generate all that paperwork, go out there, do their th things, um, record all the information, and all of that has to basically input back into the computer okay. system. Uh, that is very inefficient. And so what we've been asked to do um, a couple months ago is to go out and look for a, uh, a mobile device management solution that will help us uh, deploy and equip our inspectors, supervisors in the maintenance and construction uh, business with uh, these tablets so that they can go out there uh, with a phone in one device, with a, um, uh, a camera in one device, but more importantly, uh, those devices will be equipped with applications that they can access our um, um, enterprise resources uh, on the network directly on the field using cell, uh, cellular technology, um, as well as accessing uh, documents that support those projects, such as Word, Excel, and so on, and enter the information directly. Uh, that way, they don't have to go back into the office, print those, or input you know, data that they collect out there. So um, 
it has nice. been it has been uh, a tremendous um, beneficial uh, PLC uh, proof of concept that we have been collaborating with uh, various volunteers from the district as well to put that nice. together, and um, it has been very well received. Fantastic. Now, are you putting those Samsungs in there too? And what's the lifespan on those now? I mean. Well, those devices, they have a lifespan of between three to four years. Right. Um, in our department, it might be seven years. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but um, um, Samsung is part of the mix. We can support various platforms. Right. The Apple, Apple uh, iOS platform, uh, by the way, the iPad is our standard. Um, Samsung is part of the mix, which is the Android platform, as well as Windows platform for um, Surface Pro 4 that is uh, being adopted as a new standard. I hear those Samsungs are a hot commodity. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Some of them caught on fire while charging. Do we, have we had any of those situations? No, our department has been pretty good. We have been very compliant with our uh, established approved list in terms of products, and we have not allowed um, employees to go and purchase those, so we've been able to avoid all of that. All right. Oh, good. Well, thanks, Mike. I right. appreciate your time today. It sounds like you've got a lot going on in the infrastructure. Uh, we do. And, we'll, and thank you. Thanks to everyone um, who uh, have been participating in the email preparation for the migration um, this weekend, next weekend for District 3 office. And uh, it's going to be you know, a very long, challenging week. Uh, but we're going to get through it. Um, you know, uh, George and I went to District 2 um, yeah. earlier this week, and they had a very, very great user experience, and it was very smooth as a transition from CES to Office 365. So I'm looking for the same outcome, if not better. All right? All right. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what to call you. Tracy, Teresa, Teresa Scribner, Teresa Geisler. Acting through. Teresa Geisler. I don't know. Acting Teresa. All right. Is that is that tough to act like? What does that mean? Do you act um, like Scribner first and then I Geisler? I feel or? more like the stunt double, really. All right. All right. We'll see. Yeah. So it, hopefully we're not putting you to through many uh, harsh things as the acting. No, no. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I get a lot of exposure to things I don't see in my day to day job. So okay. I'm appreciative for that. Very cool. And what group do you, you manage specifically? Uh, does everybody? I think everybody knows what. Uh, Tracy Geisler, I, I keep wanting to call her Scribner, does, but what do you do specifically under Tracy? So Tracy, IT serv Solutions Division, mm -hmm. all the applications and the databases, and in my area it's package products, which is mainly the COTS apps, the big ones like you okay. mentioned, EFIS, PRISM, IMMS, Staff Central, so wow. um, we manage those in my team. Cool. Certainly you, you got all the, the big iron, I'm, I'm going to call it, and and so much of uh, the program area really relies on those applications, so I thank you for your efforts with that. You're welcome. Thank you. So what's going on in, in your area? Well, you talked a couple uh, transformational projects that are going on in Caltrans that ITSD is playing a lead role on. Okay. And uh, just to reiterate on those, one of them is uh, Cash CDAP. C, C, like CDAB? Like that? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I think it's DAB. Right? DAB, okay, and, uh, all right, all right. But this is DAP, but it's close, so we could, yeah, every time you hear that, just think. <laughs> Cash, if you're Cash you DAP. So uh, that is a great project, cooperating with agency, with CHP, with DMV. Oh. Um, it's a great partnership, and it's really going to help our legal and our traffic people analyze the data. They're, like you mentioned, uh, way behind on accurate collision data, so... Um, our team's leading that, uh, working with those agency partners to deliver that system. And the other one you mentioned in transformational area is the BI strategy. So we helped spearhead the development of the strategy last fiscal year, and we in IT even helped kick in some funding for that. We're partnering mainly with... Hold on. We kicked in funding? I didn't know that. Patty, did we kick in funding for that? Oh, man. All right. That must we, have gotten past we're me. We're sipping the champagne. See, oh, there the we go. BI See, too. there's a lot of interesting things happening at headquarters. A lot of champagne happening, huh? Um, and so that, you know, a lot of people talk about data and the need to govern the data and manage yep. the data. And um, we're starting with a deep dive in the maintenance division. So they have a lot of data in a lot of different areas, and they're recognizing the need to get a um, handle on it and upcoming uh, requirements from the government like MAP 21 or those kinds of things that um, they want to get ahead of that and so it's great 
working on that. I know um, we've got the PM from ITSD, Paul yeah. Allen, working on that, and um, hopefully maybe project delivery coming into the um, scope of the effort, too, to analyze all that data and hopefully set us up for um, doing it right in the future. Got it. You know, since you're already doing the, the DAB, I guess it's DAP, not DAP. Do you think you could do, you know, like a whip, or can you do a cache whip or a cache nay, nay, nay or well, something? Well, yeah, else? no, uh, I don't think so. No, I can do okay. a whip. I don't know. You, oh, nay, hey, nay. hey, are you going to do? <laughs> don't make me dare you here. <laughs> well, can we just? Chitra seems like uh, shout out to Chitra. She might be better. She's a project manager for that, all so right, we'll all have right. to hit her up on that. All right, yeah. so we'll do the cache whip and the cache nay, nay next. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. I don't know. You heard it here first. That'll be the next project. I want you guys to work that out somewhere in the. Okay. In the creative I'm, I'm sure I'll take that to the agency and the next, <laughs> the, the the next steering, steering committee Cassie meeting. Nene. They'd love that. I think. All right. Perfect. Very good. Well, thank you. I appreciate okay. uh, everything that you're doing and your, your team. All right. Thank you. Oh, I think I'm staying. Oh, yeah. We might as well have a seat. I think we're we'll bringing everybody right. else back. Right? I think we should. I think it's the is it the part of the time where we're doing Q and A? Is that correct? Uh oh, and I want to warn everybody ahead of time. You know the the DCs are going to take the hard questions. No hard questions. No hard questions. All right. You Softball. Promise. Softball. All right. Do you want us up there, or how would you like us to answer the questions? Right here. All right. Cool. Very good. All right. Q and A. Are we? What questions should we start with? Wow, that's a hard question. I don't know. <laughs> Did we get any questions uh, ahead of time? Oh. Let's see. All right. So let me start. I, I do have some notes here, so I'm going to work off of my notes on the questions. I probably got rid of the cards when, uh, when Amor G won or tied graciously. All right, so one of the questions... Right. What is your position on granting admin rights uh, to users? You know, that has been a, kind of a more significant issue than I've seen here at Caltrans and I've seen it at any other organizations. I'll tell you recently, there's been a big flurry of activity around cybersecurity. You know, so much so we've had the Department of Homeland Security in. We also had the opportunity uh, to pay for an assessment by the California Department of Military. And I'll tell you, that's one of the findings they picked us up on was, you know, the number of admin rights we have distributed across the organization. So the good news is we've actually recently hired a new ISO, right, and he's going to start on the 21st. And that's one of the things that I'm going to have uh, them start to look at, you know, our admin rights, and, you know, is it too liberal, right, are, are there ways we can rationalize that, just like we're rationalizing our hardware and software just like, uh, you know, we're setting standards, you know, maybe it's the time to take a good hard look at that and, and see if we have too many folks with admin rights. So uh, I guess my stand is, you know, once the ISO comes in formally, um, we're going to get the word out. We're going to start working with program areas and the district IT folks to see where we're at now and ultimately determine where we should be. All right. Um, another question I got is, will Caltrans begin using Skype for business in the near future. And to me, that's part of the O365 suite. Mike, what's going on with that? So um, our strategy is pretty simple. Let's um, migrate email services from CES to Office 365 first, stabilize that, and then we'll start looking at other services like Skype and determine how we're going to roll that out. Um, you know, from um, um, a perspective of a user perspective, they want it right away. Uh, from a, uh, a management perspective, we got to be very careful um, as to you know what is needed to basically provide quality of service when we will roll out Skype. You know we want um, um, uh, terrific you know video quality, audio, and so on. Our biggest concern is uh, bandwidth, so uh, we have to look at location, location, location that are prepared for that type of uh, technology and work with uh, the district offices, you know, to make sure that we have a plan to roll it out uh, in increments mm -hmm. so that uh, we can uh, be mindful of the quality, the performance of the service, and sustain that. All right. So, so it's fair to say it's coming, right? It is coming. But network's your biggest issue, and you've got to figure correct. out which districts 
have the bandwidth to take it on first. That's correct. All right. Fantastic. Another question I got was, would you consider elevating the journey level at Caltrans IT from associate to staff? And I think that's one of the things you, you probably saw on the, the base of the pyramid, right, as we talked about stability, and one of those items there was workforce planning. So, you know, as, as we look at our workforce, you know, and compare it to other organizations and compare it, you know, not, and even internally, right, what's the program doing? I think that's something we're going to have to look at broadly and to figure out what makes sense. From a budget perspective, right, our budget is actually managed by the admin division. And the way we have to do things like that now is all those transactions have to be bundled to a, a net zero. So if we do promotion, right, our budget uh, shop is asked that we, that we downgrade a corresponding position. Now, in the future, what I hope to do is uh, look at some BCPs. You know, we, we put the two BCPs forward this year, and uh, next year we'll be looking at some personnel-related uh, BCPs. You know, hopefully we can get the support you know, internally, right, from the department and externally through agency to see if we can uh, kind of upgrade our positions. But that's a long road, you know, I'll be honest. Uh, I think it's, it's something that is important for our workforce, important for us, but it's, it's a long road to get there because uh, from a position standpoint, department finance tends to be very tight, right, on personnel costs. But I'm hopeful, you know, like I said, we're in the red zone on our current BCPs, you know, I hope we can get uh, equally as far when we look at personnel-related BCPs. Um, the next question, will Caltrans IT ever allow telecommuting? You know, there, there is telecommuting policy not only here at Caltrans, but certainly at the statewide level at CalHR. There's a lot of telecommuting policies. But, you know, it's really up to the direct supervisor, right, and to figure out what kinds of jobs really fit, you know, those telework, telecommuting policies. And some, sometimes, you know, sometimes it's ad hoc, right? Sometimes it can be uh, routine. But I would encourage folks, you know, to kind of work with your supervisor, right, to see if, you know, your job is one of those where it makes sense uh, to do some um, telework either on an ad hoc basis or on a routine basis. Another question is about... Can you let us know where we're at with virus and malware remediation? And when can we expect these badly needed tools? Um, again, I, I think I'm going to defer to the new ISO who should start on the 21st. I'll tell you, um, right now we have about a $3 million deficit in o &E, right? Uh, we do have a large unfunded list. And what the division chiefs do is they get together and they pull all of these unfunded needs lists and they prioritize them. All right, so all the stuff that you asked for actually does end up on the list, but, you know, we can only go down so far in terms of our spend. And so the virus and the malware, right, all that software, whether it's storage, right, because we're desperately running out of storage in some areas. And some server rooms, i got to tell you, it's HVAC, right, and power, right? So I, I think we tend to look at those maintenance activities as a priority, right? If we got HVAC going down in a server room, we're more likely to spend money on making sure that server room is, is stable, right, before we can add new software items into our, our tool set. And last one's actually a pretty easy one. I want to defer to Patty on this, but I'm not going to tell you what the question is. <laughs> no, uh, as long as it's easy. <laughs> when will the IT staff appreciation lunch take place? Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to assume we're talking about South Metro. Yes. Uh, with invited guests from the local districts of 3 and 10. Uh, well, we were rained out uh, for our planned barbecue that was scheduled in October, but we do have an event tentatively planned for next Friday afternoon. And if you haven't seen it yet, an invitation will be coming soon. Fantastic. Any, any preview? Do you know what we're going to do with the... We're not doing pie in the face or dunk tank, are we? we well, we aren't, right. but uh, you might be. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Nice staff. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll okay. just be a very relaxed, informal setting of uh, maybe some sweets and okay. a few games and things like that. Nice. <laughs> nice. That'll be fun. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're all here. Uh, do you have any questions for us? Wow, you guys are too easy. You're so accommodating. You do the great video and you're tired. And there's no more questions. All right. Did we get any, Ed? Did we get any other questions via email or org chart? Was it an org chart question? 
Oh, you know, um, I just saw the I saw the September org charts out there. Uh, so the org charts um, will be updated online on an ongoing monthly basis. Uh, I discussed earlier about hiring and some of the challenges. Well, I've also had that staffing challenge within our MSO organization. So we have some vacancies to fill there as well. So we haven't been as efficient as I would like as far as getting things updated quickly. However, September's uh, org chart is online, and October we, we post after the end of the month. Uh, October's is prepared. I just actually approved it earlier oh. this week, so it should be going Fantastic. online soon. All right. Very good. Any other uh, final questions or thoughts? Well, I want to thank uh, everybody. I got to tell you, you know, again, I kicked off this meeting uh, thanking uh, folks in D3, and I want to continue that. I really want to thank you. The video was great. You know, I, I think you guys have set the bar uh, pretty high. We're looking forward to, as we go to other districts, uh, engage them in a similar fashion. I also want to thank uh, Ed and his crew. You know, this doesn't happen without all the great work that's happening with the folks who are, who are videotaping this. So I, I thank you all for that effort. Uh, the next location, it will, the next quarterly is going to be sometime in, what do you think, Ed? Is that February, March, somewhere in there? Yeah. All right. I say we go to the coast, right? So it'll be, it'll be winter in Sacramento. So let's find a nice warm spot, you know, maybe San Luis or someplace. Uh, we'll figure that out and then. We look forward to engaging you again. So thank you very much.